Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Michal Med. I'm from Czech Republic. Uh, I'm uh, from Czech Technical University in Prague, but I'm in quite close cooperation with uh, Czech uh, Office for Czech Cadastro Office. Uh, I'm working also there for partly um, part time. And I'd like to say something about extending of Inspire uh, for the national purposes. Uh, it would be nice to think about uh, what's Inspire about uh, <clears throat> and what it's not, uh, I think. And I've heard it in mo quite a lot of presentations here uh, yesterday and day before yesterday that uh, most of you takes Inspire as an oblig obligation. It's something uh, from uh, GRC or from European Commission we have to achieve uh, and then we can have some, hmm, we're not thinking about uh, outcomes and outputs. Uh, I think that we should think about Inspire as an opportunity and opportunity uh, to achieve our goal. The goal is that if, if you are publishing some data, you should publish it uh, in a readable format and readable structure so everyone can use them. Use them. Uh, everything else in the Inspire is just to help you to achieve this goal. Uh, Inspire covers quite a, quite a wide area of human life and human work, and uh, in quite a lot of topics, and it covers it across the whole Europe, which is quite. A, on the one side, it's quite interesting, and on the other side, it's uh, a little bit scary because uh, in most of the European countries, all of those data are somehow uh, collected, somehow distributed, but in most of the countries, it's somehow else. So what Inspire do is it's trying to simplify the structure and complexity of the data to the minimum level, uh, to the minimum common level of most of the European countries. And uh, I would like to talk about administrative data. Uh, what I think with administrative data, I mean addresses, I mean buildings, I mean cadastral parcels, and I mean uh, administrative units. So buildings are a little bit on the edge. It depends on the source data sets. So in the Czech Republic, we have uh, more data sets uh, which contains buildings. And uh, one of them is uh, the registry of territorial identification and it's, uh, uh, it's the legal status of the buildings. Uh, and the other one is a fundamental base of geographical data and uh, that is the real estate. That means that if you come into the nature and you see a building, uh, it's going to be in the fundamental base, but it doesn't have to be in the, uh, in the territorial identification registry because it doesn't have to be legal yet. So, uh, because uh, of the complexity of the topics, like I said before, uh, it's quite uh, difficult uh, to uh, have uh, the application schemas as complex uh, to achieve everything we need. Uh, we have, uh, on the right side, we have uh, application schemas uh, for buildings, uh, which allows us uh, to have different uh, level of detail uh, and different level of geometry. On the left side, we have cadastral parcels. Uh, the cadastral parcels, official XSD, it's only the left uh, up, the cadastral parcels. There are no extensions for cadastral parcels uh, by GRC. And uh, why is that? Is that because uh, if, you, if you put it to the uh, simpl simplify, simplest level, uh, that uh, you have the level of uh, the Smallest common, uh, smallest common uh, stuff across the whole countries, you get some, you get something which is uh, not really useful for the users in the country itself. Uh, later, I explain why. Uh, uh, after application schemas, application schemas uh, describes uh, what uh, should be there in the data, and then we have XSDs. XSDs describe uh, the technical way how to how to achieve. How to achieve that? Uh, I would, uh, yeah. Now the transformation of the data is the, it's the s to simplify the, the whole the process of transformation. We are trying to transform the data from national databases using uh, Inspire application schemas and Inspire rules. 
uh, into the GML files, which uh, follows the structure of uh, Inspire application schemas. And uh, implementation rules for Inspire allows uh, extending uh, of schemas, and it has two uh, simple rules. One of the rules is that uh, all the extensions have to inherit from uh, the original Inspire schemas, and the second rule is that everything uh, you make uh, uh, as an extension has to be documented, uh, which is quite a clever rule because without documentation, it's uh, quite uh, difficult to reuse it afterwards. Uh, so let's uh, let's look at some uh, extensions uh, in practice. Uh, we have uh, basically three kinds of extensions. Uh, one of the extension is uh, extending uh, extending of uh, WMS services. In Inspire Catastro Parcels, uh, as I said before, on the right side we have uh, the basic core of Catastro Parcels, which is common for the whole European uh, Union, basically. On the left side, uh, we have uh, the map uh, which our users ask for. Uh, if you look at it, uh, you see some differences. There are uh, some more information than on the right side. And uh, all these changes are at this time only in the WMS services. But uh, for the users, uh, it's really not interesting to use the uh, Inspire data on the right side because uh, the semantic depth of the data isn't deep enough. Uh, the other thing is uh, that uh, we have the, the semantic depth of the information is deep enough. This uh, is administrative units. But in the Czech Republic, we have uh, much more units than only those four administrative units. They are, uh, uh, they are, uh, they are done by uh, Inspire. So we have created uh, our own uh, WMS uh, service for units extended, which has the same semantic depth of, uh, as Inspire administrative units but it contains about 20, uh, 20 different layers, uh, which are also used by uh, administrative authorities across the whole country. And the third thing is, uh, third kind of extension in the WMS is used only for, uh, only for visualization. Uh, if you look at the Inspire team addresses, you have only, only the black squares. And uh, if you want to use this uh, service uh, as a single service, it doesn't uh, make much sense, so we added uh, more layers uh, to set it in context with uh, thoroughfares uh, and uh, with the names of the address places and, and so on. Uh, and Inspire or Eurogeographics also have uh, one official extension of Inspire, which is European Location Network. I don't want to speak a lot about European Location Network, but uh, basically where Inspire, in my opinion, where Inspire focuses on the large scale data on the national level, European Location Framework tries to extend this data in a smaller uh, scale level across the countries, which is quite uh, interesting goal. And uh, in the end, uh, I think that we should use uh, ELF data but it has to be clear that all of the data uh, are also Inspire compatible. So we should use ELF data with uh, Inspire on its forehead. Uh, and now to the extending itself. Uh, last year, during the, uh, during the research at the university, I was uh, creating an uh, application. I was, uh, we, were, we were trying to uh, create uh, buildings uh, the implementation of Inspired Buildings in the Czech Republic. And after the analysis, uh, we have found out that in the base schema, which is uh, only covered by XSD in the, in, at the GRC uh, schemas portal, uh, that uh, in the basic schema, most of the semantics are missing. And without those semantics, like uh, connection to the address or connection to the parcel, uh, or technical or economical aspects of the building, so that it's quite uh, unuseful for our our uh, users, and uh, ex and ex XSD schema doesn't uh, exist for that. So after a few months or years uh, discussing with GRC about uh, uh, about uh, publishing those XSD schemas, uh, I have uh, decided to create it by myself. So. 
On the left side, this is the building based uh, package, uh, which is uh, officially published at the GRC page. And on the right side uh, is something uh, we have uh, we have added. Uh, we didn't have to document it because uh, all of this stuff is already documented in the data specification of buildings. Only the XML schema wasn't there. So uh, this is a little bit opposite uh, process because we are not extending something and then documenting it. We're extending something according to the documentation. Uh, that was quite easy stuff. <laughs> Uh, if you look at it, the most important thing about extending is uh, inheritance. Uh, everything you do, you, you need to inherit uh, from something that uh, already exists. Uh, it's uh, really important uh, because if someone else uh, tries to use it or use it uh, somehow differently, it uh, already helps uh, if you're using something that already exists. Uh, always try to use something that already exists if it's possible. Uh, and the second uh, thing uh, I'm, try, uh, I'm working on right now is uh, extending of cadastro parcels. Uh, it's uh, something a little bit uh, different, a little bit more complicated because we have no documentation and we have no application schemas uh, I we can follow now. So the first step is to create application schema, cadastro parcels extended, uh, like in the buildings. And it inherits all the basic semantics and all the geometry from uh, the basic cadastro parcels. And uh, what should we, uh, uh, what what there should be in the in the extension? Uh, in the extension should be uh, stuff that uh, our national users are calling for. It's the information about the value. Uh, it's not the value itself, but it's only the information if there is or there is not any value uh, documented. Uh, because the value of the property is a little bit personal information. <laughs> and uh, we have uh, some inf more information about precision uh, of the data. Uh, we have uh, more information about the uh, list of the list in the national maps, uh, number of the list, and we have some information about, uh, about the uh, points field uh, in, the, in the area and some other stuff uh, uses, uh, which is used for geodes. Uh, there's quite a lot of information which needs to be extended uh, in this extension. And after that, we need to have some documentation. Uh, as far as I expect, uh, I think that uh, UML uh, model of the extension should be enough. And if here's someone who knows more than me, I would be really glad to, to know it as well. <laughs> and uh, in the end, I would like to tell something about extended uh, thinking. Uh, if uh, we are trying uh, to achieve something uh, and uh, when we are trying, I think that uh, what, what we are trying to achieve during in the INSPIRE is that our data are useful for someone to use. Uh, and it's not uh, only, like I said in the beginning, it's not an obligation. Uh, we need to look at it as an opportunity. And the opportunity is uh, mostly for our users. And our users are trying uh, to use the data. So we need to think uh, what data they need and for what purposes are they trying to uh, use it. And I try to show it as a, on one example. Uh, we have the web map service operation. Uh, we were solving this problem during the uh, European location framework. Uh, and uh, Inspire, uh, view services for Inspire doesn't require get feature info operation but uh, European Location Framework requires that. So we were uh, trying to standardize a response for this, uh, for this operation. And this is everything what is written in the OGC standard uh, for get feature info response. Server shall return a response according to requested info format if the request is valid. This is not a lot of information. So uh, we were trying to create uh, some XML schema uh, for this response. And uh, we were trying to think uh, extendingly. So in the beginning, we created something what we called feature info base. And from this base, all other schemas are inheriting. And we created a base schema as a response uh, for feature info cadastral parcels. And in the future, if someone needs something more, he can use it, he can extend it. And uh, so, if you are developing something like that, you need to think that someone uh, can come after you and add something to that. 
And uh, when you are developing this kind of stuff, you have to try uh, to simplify it as much as possible so it's uh, useful for other people too. And that's all by my side, and I hope that you have some questions. Thank you very much, Michael. Uh, first, we will take questions from the audience. Uh, yes, Katie. Um, uh, wait for the micro, please. <coughs> micro is already coming. Are you taking the, the other Inspire information classes we have for that into account? Uh, no, we are. We were trying to um, to make the basis of this uh, of this schemas uh, from the Inspire, but it's not really easy to inherit from Inspire itself because Inspire have uh, uh, much more uh, features uh, with uh, much uh, you know with the cardinality which isn't uh, really useful for this kind of stuff. Yeah, <laughs> but, okay, but you, you could try and sort of reuse attributes to keep it. Yeah, alive. yeah, yeah. I can show it to you, uh, show it to you okay. after, and I think that it should be maybe uh, published on ELF pages. Yeah. One more question. If not, then I have a question. Um, is this is your um, you spoke about documentation and uh, about uh, a level of metadata maybe necessary beside the UML? Um, have you registered this uh, um, extension in the uh, Extending Inspire project, uh, where we try to collect uh, extensions and uh, to document them to a certain degree? You know, there's quite a lot of projects uh, coming uh, right now. Uh, I was documenting this extension for the buildings uh, during the Arena project. Yeah. And uh, yesterday, I have found out that there's some other project for documenting extensions. So I was hoping that uh, that's you. OK, so I connect with you after. Yeah, we would really recommend, uh, if you have an extension, please uh, yeah. contact Jan Dirk uh, for, we are, uh, for documentation. So we are trying to collect documentation about all extensions. Um, to make everybody uh, benefit from that. Thank you very much. Okay. So, our next speaker, Katie. Okay, I'm going to be doing something slightly different on this. Most of, the, most of the talks here, to my knowledge, are how do we do the formal extension process class derivation. And my problem was then, okay, now we're all extending it. We're running into the next mess. Because I'm sure Austria will extend it differently than the Czech Republic. So, after, after all this effort, we've got this nice Inspire, we're now starting to really use it, we're seeing where it's missing. And how, how do we avoid this next step of upcoming nicely standards-based chaos, where we know the core is the same and the rest evolves and everything which isn't Inspire is back where we started. So the, the problem is, I mean, we're gonna have the same requirements. Sometimes they'll be different, but in a lot of cases, it's gonna be the same concept being added, and I can guarantee you in 99% of the cases, the attribute is gonna have a different name, and you have no, no way of knowing that these two model extensions are actually the same thing. And taking as an example, I, I did the, the air quality extension for, for the European air quality reporting based on the environmental monitoring facilities. One thing we needed there was a European station name. So I extended that, called it EU station name. I know one of the next upcoming bits will be doing a similar model for water. I'm sure it will have, I, I put as an example, wise name. I'm not sure what it's gonna be called, but something will be different. And nobody will know that they can basically just fold this flat and it's the same thing. So I've been chewing on this basically since I started messing with the air quality stuff and realizing I've cleaned up one mess and I'm making the next in the same process. 
and so started scratching at ver various options. What can we do there? Had a great workshop last year at the, the ISIS conference. That's the International Symposium of Environmental Software Systems. It's a nice, hardcore, international conference where you really get down to the technical level. And based on my initial research and then the discussions there, the, the outcome was we would need some type of reusable properties which are really tightly coupled with a persistent URI. If we had this, we would then have the type of little building block pieces we need to stick the extensions on it. I mean, I'm, I'm a child of the Lego generation. I like little bits and pieces I can stick together to make something new. So I came out of ISIS from Melbourne a year and a half ago and said, okay, cool idea, but how do we do this? and started scratching through what, what options are there for, impl for implementing this. And the four options I came up with where we could do some sort of a semantics just based on the data types that I do a very, very complex data type uh, derivation. I could do something using interfaces. I considered actually, I'm not sure who's familiar with the MOF. The MOF is actually the meta model behind UML. So one of the, the avenues I explored was could we actually tweak UML to the point where we could get these reusable URI-based properties in. And the final approach was stereotypes. So I spent quite a while checking all of these out and trying to figure out what the pros and cons are. With data types, I mean, you, the problem is you end up then with a very complex semantic derivation hierarchy in your UML. You're basically building an ontology in UML it's going to be very difficult to, to manage. And at the end of the day, I'd be worried that people will still end up using a data type, the same data type for subtly different meanings. That they'll, they'll call it, I'm not going back to the example station name, but then it's the, the European, the national and the local station name. So I wasn't really happy with it. Next approach was interfaces, which again, for, in a way it would work nicely. My, my big worry would be trying to interpret the UML diagram where half of my, my attributes come from interfaces because then I've got my class and I've got this whole sea of interfaces I'm deriving it from. And the other problem is you have it nicely semantically in the UML, you transfer this to XSD and it's gone. The interface just, the, 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 the values, the attributes from the interface just get subsumed into the, the main class. So you've done all this nice modeling work and at the end of the day, it's gone. Next approach. Okay, this was the hardcore approach, let's mess with the MOF. And so I spent quite a while chewing through the MOF documentation and there I then came to the conclusion, we can't because the cardinality for both attributes and associations has a minimum of one. So I really, I can't define an association or an attribute which isn't attached to something. I mean, I could do a placeholder bit, but this is where I said, okay, this is also getting too weird. Check mark doesn't work. Final approach was stereotypes. And this is what actually ended up working out nicely. It's tight, tightly bound with the URI. The information nicely breaks down into the XSD and can be made available there. And the really cool insight I had when I finally had this sorted was actually it's the, the hinge between UML and semantic technologies. If we had this type of reusable URI properties sorted this way in UML, the way the door is open to start porting things to, to RDF to, to link data. So how do we do it? I created a stereotype which defines a unique URI for the property, the name of the property, and the data type. And then I added three constraints. One is that the property must be unique per class. One is that the name must be aligned with the, the central source of the name, and also the data type has to be aligned. So that's all within the stereotype. And I built that up for attributes, classes, aggregations, associations, and I can't read the last. Composition. So that, that was all no problem. And so you, you can do a simple type as a, a URI property. You can do a complex type. It's a bit of uh, configuring that all in Enterprise Architect. And now we've got the same example from before 
but we don't have the people extending it in different ways. We've got the predefined EU station name, URI property, nailed down somewhere externally, and each time somebody extends their data model with this attribute, they just click it on at the bottom. Transposition into XSD, so it's, you can define the URI, URI property as an XSD element, and then nicely click it in, and what, what did I do there? Um, I'm not quite sure. Read it through, think it through. If you, if you have questions, ask me later. I might, I might know what I did. Um, here we've got the example of the transposition into XSD. Okay, it's partially about having actually as, uh, you can add ex extra attributes into the XSD, and this is where you then can nail down the, the external URI. Same thing transposed to, to XML. So I mean, you need to go back to the XSD to find the source of the property, but you need to go to the XSD to know what you're talking about anyway. And the nice thing on this level, it stays nice and clean and life continues as we're used to. So conclusions are, to my view, URI properties would be the solution to make additional building blocks apart from the classes. It's basically pulling the attributes up as first class citizens, which we can then reuse and start building with also. It can be nicely implemented through the use of stereotypes. I mean, does it need a small twig and shape change and everything would run? And we'd have the added benefit that we can nicely then trans make the next step towards semantic technologies linked data. That's it. Thank you, Katie. For, for information, there's at the, the end, there's the, the, the information from the ISIS conference. So anybody who's interested in the presentations there, the outcomes. If, if you have putting a link, you can even get there's a 10 page position paper, which I put out originally in the conference proceedings. Questions? Are there any questions from the audience? Please ask questions. Yes. And uh, may, may Does it work? Yes. Uh, maybe a general question. How far is your solution away from the concept of linked data? From, from what? For the concept of linked data. So how far away is your, your uh, solution away from the concept of linked data? Because I think it's quite similar. Th that's what I was saying. That's where I, 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 I did it to figure out the reusable properties. And when the solution was done, I realized actually this is the way to get from the UML object-oriented word, world to linked data. And I mean, I've been having discussions with W3C and Phil Archer went through this and said, cool. Uh, I'm right now looking for funding. How can we continue this and see if we can get this nailed down as a W3C standard? And is the, um, is the concept implemented in an extension already? So you mentioned the air quality, uh, but it's not in there. It's, it's not implemented anywhere. I mean, it's based on having done the air quality, mm. realizing, okay, cool, but I've made the next mess. How can I fix this mess? And this was actually done as part of my work. I've, I've been, I never finished the university, so I went back to the Technical University of Vienna a year or two ago and said, okay, I, I, I need a topic. Uh, I have a problem. Let's solve the problem as my topic to get my check mark there, and that's been the outcome of it. So it's, it hasn't really been tried anywhere. I've managed to write it down and submit it, and now I'm going to see what, what happens with this. Yeah, I would like to ask maybe about something a little bit practical. Uh, have you been talking to someone uh, who wants to use this kind of technology? Because uh, uh, we are quite experimenting with, R with RDFs and linked data as well. Uh, but we found out that almost uh, no one uh, knows what to do with that. Uh, because, uh, you know, most of the people which are trying to implement Inspire uh, don't, does, uh, don't have uh, abstract thinking enough to get the idea of uh, object modeling. <laughs> and if you try to tell them something about a semantic web, and so they're totally confused. Yeah, but at the same time, if one looks at how much, how much data is popping up as linked data, I mean, this seems to be at least one of the directions where things are going. I'm not sure, I mean, I'm, I'm an old friend of semantics. I was working in ontologies 10 years ago, and like the fact that my worlds are growing back together. My worry is exactly that the technologies still aren't quite there. I mean, that's why I also pulled back from OWL and said, okay, RDF linked data is close enough and it, it brings us further and it's at least semi-manageable. 
where I mean the, the manageability of the technology is my problem on all levels. It's also with Inspire as it stands today. Who, who do you know who can consume Inspire other than the geeks who are providing it? Okay, are there more questions? If not, then thank you again, Katie. Very interesting talk. <laughs> Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, today we are going to talk about data standardization process in Turkey, uh, which we worked uh, on Plan GMA model. Uh, to begin uh, with, uh, introduce myself. Uh, I'm a stipulator, uh, worked in a geographical, inf geographical information system. Uh, in this pro uh, project, we worked together uh, with different uh, occupation group, uh, such as uh, software developers, survey engineers, uh, planners, uh, in order to create this model. Uh, so in our presentation, firstly, uh, I'm going to try to explain the uh, situation in Turkey and planning process in Turkey. Uh, and then I'm going to uh, explain uh, e-plan automation system. Uh, then my friend Gizan will continue to plan GML model and the standard standardization. Uh, we will finish uh, with the field work and uh, summarize to our study. Here is the outline that we will follow to today. First of all, I, I want to talk about the situation in Turkey. Uh, as you know, Turkey is a big uh, country and its population is increasing. Uh, when you look at uh, last 50 years, uh, and due to the rapid change of uh, population, cities have become a center of attraction, uh, job opportunities, uh, demand of needs, uh, or development of, of technology uh, caused to increase uh, migration from rural to urban areas. Uh, and also it caused to the problem uh, that we called uh, urban sprawl. Uh, here is the uh, graphic of urban and rural popula population in Turkey. Uh, as you can see, urban population uh, has grown from 25% uh, 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 to 75% uh, uh, today. Uh, on the contrary, rural population has declined. Uh, it means that there is a pressure on urban areas, uh, and pressure on urban areas cause uh, some problems uh, on uh, our sites. Uh, like uh, urban sprawl, uh, lack of infrastructure, uh, lack of uh, public places and buildings. Uh, solution is making, sorry, solution is making spatial plans. Uh, in Turkey, uh, there are some institutions that have a, a authorized, 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 sorry, uh, authorized of making plans, and. Uh, there is a little bit complex uh, in Turkey planning process. I'm going to uh, explain it. Here's our project, uh, ePlan Automation System. ePlan Automation Systems uh, aims that uh, digital, digitized spatial plans uh, that are produced, presented, uh, published, or served. Uh, and uh, collect uh, all of them in one place and one platform uh, and serve them. Uh, these plans must uh, be prepared by the authorized organizations and institutions uh, and uh, spatial plans will be generated, published and in, uh, elect prepared in JS uh, data structure. Uh, so, uh, with this project, uh, we use the uh, JS uh, to digital, digitize uh, spatial plans uh, before we create plan GML data format. Uh, we chose JS because it gives a, a chance to monitor uh, and analyze uh, the and query of the data. Uh, JS provides powerful decision support and uh, uh, try to collect the data from different parts of the uh, areas. Uh, for example, if you have a data set uh, includes uh, green areas or public buildings, you can query the data and uh, you, uh, you can create a map uh, which uh, shows the green areas. Uh, why we choose the JS is that. Uh, 
On the other hand, uh, you can uh, make risk assessments or uh, land use management, uh, and uh, it gives us to uh, make optimal solutions and try to um, uh, try to uh, manage the areas. In this sense, we aim to create smart data sets and uh, we define data model according to it. Uh, before the data standardization topic, uh, I want to talk about planning process in Turkey because it's uh, very uh, complex in uh, Turkey. Uh, there are a lot of institutions and shareholders, uh, shareholders in planning process. Uh, some of them you can see in the slides. Uh, for example, uh, uh, you have a, a prepared a development plant uh, which scales of uh, one slash uh, a thousand uh, plan. Uh, it is prepared by city planners uh, and sent it to specific institutions. It starts with city planners, uh, actually, and uh, the, sent it to municipality. If it is a, a metropolitan city, uh, such as Istanbul, uh, it is delivered to the next top institutions, and it goes like uh, this uh, and this. Uh, and finally, it is approved and declared to the public. Uh, it's only for one municipality. It's follow this procedure. And uh, however, in Turkey, there are 81 provinces, provinces and uh, 1,397 municipality. Each municipality prepared this plan like this, and uh, there isn't any. Uh, rules to uh, their follow, follow up. Uh, so plans uh, that is prepared uh, by the municipalities, uh, we have some problems uh, with the data they are preparing like this. Uh, there isn't any data standardization. Uh, each municipality uh, prepared the plan by their own rules. Uh, and uh, there isn't any interoperability uh, because of that. Uh, also, uh, data exchange and data sharing issues uh, like this. Uh, so, uh, all plans are different from each other. Uh, there isn't any interoperability. Uh, and uh, therefore, we define a data format called PlanGML uh, with the help of the Inspire models and teams. Uh, what's the plan GML? Uh, plan GML uh, is actually uh, is a standard that uh, tells you the, uh, what's the attribute and what uh, should be uh, have and what's the geometry type and which attributes uh, it uh, has to be. Uh, by the according to uh, Spatia plans regulations in Turkey and. Uh, we created this uh, format, uh, validate uh, format, and uh, prepare plans uh, according to this. Uh, and then uh, we uh, we validate the format in our system, and uh, we served the data uh, on uh, map on the map. Uh, Plan Gemma is. Uh, created a uh, hub of Inspire models and teams. And uh, now, uh, Gizam, uh, my friend, give you more specific information about Plan German and how we can create it. Uh, welcome again. Uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Gizam Örünç, uh, and I have been working on geographical information systems for five years. Uh, first of all, I want to make a brief explanation about uh, Plan GML. Uh, as most of you know, GML is an extension data format uh, that you can extend the GML format and uh, describe your own types, your own features, your own uh, attributes, etc. Plan GML uh, is also an uh, extendable data format. Uh, it has basic geographical data, such as point nine polygon. Uh, and uh, we can give that uh, an extension uh, by defining uh, an XST, new XST. 
Uh, to achieve uh, data standardization, uh, some of steps should have followed. Uh, these are standardization, uh, interoperability, data sharing, and data collection. Uh, because of that, uh, we examine all of the uh, conceptual model components based on Inspire, uh, and we examine also plan uh, GML and city GML uh, and the other countries. Uh, what we decide, but uh, we decided that we cannot use any of these uh, formats, uh, but we can use their aspect of uh, data structure because regulations are different in Turkey uh, and the symbology or something else is uh, different. Because of that, uh, we design our uh, data format uh, by extending uh, GML. Uh, by doing that, uh, we achieve that uh, the interoperability between uh, programs, you know, in, in geographical information systems, there are lots of programs, and uh, they have all uh, their own data format, like shape, tab, uh, etc. And they store their data uh, at database uh, differently. By using GML, uh, we can share the data uh, from uh, software to software. Uh, and we uh, give services to these all softwares. Uh, we use GML formats power uh, and capability as geometry standardization, uh, which means uh, every object in the schema uh, has its own uh, geometry type. Uh, for example, uh, we describe a building uh, that is in um, polygon, uh, and the road uh, will be line, uh, of course. Uh, we, we kept our data uh, from uh, a cloud uh, site database. Uh, by doing that, we take uh, all the GML data from uh, clients, and we store all this data to cloud-based uh, database. Uh, by using XTST data formats, uh, we can validate our data from clients, uh, and if uh, a field is wrong or uh, dismissed or something else, uh, we reject this data, and uh, we don't store uh, this data. Uh, by using GML, uh, we get, we capable of the geometry standardization, coordinate reference system standardization, uh, and attribute standardization. Uh, we sort our data web marketer projection, uh, but the clients uh, will be uh, different projections, different uh, different codes. Uh, while we translate the data from clients to uh, our database, uh, we transform uh, any coordinate system to web marketer projection. Uh, and after that, uh, by using uh, GML and the plan GML, uh, we have a data that is portable, trackable, editable, uh, and we uh, have the capability of interoperability between uh, different softwares. Uh, another work done uh, is not only academic. Uh, we had uh, so much field work. Uh, you can see four different provinces in Turkey. Uh, Ardahan, Elazığ, Kırşehir, uh, and Kayseri. Uh, there are so much population uh, and they different uh, to each other. Uh, after this process uh, make done, we uh, successfully uh, stored all the data from these uh, provinces. Uh, and in the future, uh, we will separate uh, this data format to whole country uh, by developing the system. Our uh, plan GML data format uh, give us a chance to uh, Version uh, you can uh, we can give a version to plan GML uh, and we have uh, migration tools from the older versions to new versions uh, and we will keep uh, our data clean uh, and up to date by using that. Uh, finally, uh, to summarize our work, our project, we have cre created our own planning data standardization. Uh, and uh, we using plan GML schemas, uh, we produce special data of pilot, uh, pilot provinces. We, we have begun to store this uh, data on a cloud-based uh, database, uh, and we have already uh, 
begin to serve this data via VMS, VFS, etc., to other clients, uh, other companies, other clinic companies. Uh, we can share data uh, to all uh, shareholders, uh, and we can uh, authenticate and authorize uh, our users uh, to our systems by using that our data uh, served uh, by filtering to their uh, roles, uh, etc. Uh, every company uh, and any planning institution uh, will uh, start to use these services and, and they uh, will develop uh, in nearby, they will develop all their plans uh, with this system. Uh, thank you for listening. <laughs> uh, if uh, you have any question, uh, we are glad to hear that. Questions from the audience? So um, I was I was interested uh, in the process how you basically built the Plan GML uh, um, application schema. Did you use the model driven approach? Did you work on UML models? Yes, yes. Uh, we used the model driven approach. Uh, we had UML diagrams uh, and uh, we used Enterprise Architect. Uh, and we export XSTs from these uh, projects, and uh, we have developed our software by using these XST schema, uh, schemas, uh, and we access to, to class generalization, uh, and that's it. Okay, so if you if you like to share uh, the UML models, if you like to share the links uh, where you can where one can find Plan GML. Uh, you are also invited, of course, to, to contact Jan Dirk and okay. uh, to add this to the inventory of the extensions. And uh, if there are no further questions, no, uh, then thank you again very much. Uh, a big applause to all the presenters, please. And uh, with that, I would like to close the session. Uh, thank you very much for listening, uh, for your active contribution, and uh, have a good coffee break.